I want to just put our minds on worship. Turn it up, son. One of the things that happens, things go on so much. And you know, it's been told to me by someone that I hold so dear. That relationship means everything. Understanding what that looks like means everything. When I'm speaking of worship, I'm not talking about a lot of noise. I'm not talking about everything lining up according to an order of service. When I'm talking about worship, I mean before we get here, we tune with the master. So that when we walk in here, not about an agenda, not about an order of service. It's not about having every lined up to put on Facebook, but it's about, Lord, I thank you for opening up one more opportunity. Oh, I'm, I'm talking about worship today. Because see, the worship I'm talking about brought my mama back today. The worship I'm talking about is keeping my mama. I know y'all think that mama's a poor damsel and how she gonna make it. But let me tell you this. I'm gonna speak for it. My mama been knowing the Lord for 80 years. She knew my daddy for 60. So let me help you here. I think she was leaning a little bit longer on the one that's still with her than the one that's gone on home. So the one that's kept her 82 years is still keeping her today. So don't y'all worry about my mama. God is blessing. See, all of y'all got a testimony of how good he is. All of y'all done been through something that you can say now. I give you the praise, Lord. I give you my worship. Yeah. Precious Lord, yeah. take my hand yeah. through those things seen and unseen yeah. and lead me on. Yeah. That's who we lean on. It's the master. Yeah. Relationship means everything. And that's what we're going to have. Worship through relationship. Not only with each other, but with Christ. I started this month preaching in relation to my relationship with Christ. Each week, I spoke in general to what is my relationship with Christ? And that's what I want us to truly look at. What is my relationship individually 
What is my relationship with Christ? That's what I want you to have as a key focus this month. I want to, thank you, son. I want to take us to the book of Revelations. Last book in the Bible. The second chapter. And you heard the first through the seventh verse. But I want to draw your attention to verse, sec verse 2, 3, 4, and 5. Second chapter, beginning with verse 2 of Revelation. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not but has found them liars and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have something, or I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else, I will come unto thee quickly and I will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. Verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. I want to join with the subject this morning. Is your heart in it? Is your heart in it? First Sunday, the Lord led us to speak, staying on track. We talked about being able to discern, develop, from God's word and do, be doers of his word. Second Sunday we talked about it. it's not what it looks like. And I don't know about y'all, but boy, this past week did I have so many things that I could put that with. It's not what it looks like. It's not the appearance. What action am I taking and what affirmation did I get from God? This morning, we're going to talk about, is your heart in it? What do you mean, Pastor? Is your heart in it? Y'all know, and I'm just going, I'm going to kind of teach and preach a little this morning. Because I want us to truly understand this scripture, is our heart. In it. I want you to remember this all week long. Is my heart in it? Y'all know when you first fall in love. Y'all know you put your best foot forward. You put on your best clothes, your best perfume, your best hair. You do everything up because you have a desired interest in someone. 
You get a new job. And boy, on that job, you there on time. No, excuse me. You there before time. You go on that job saying hello to everybody. Because see, this was the job you truly was asking the Lord for. So you, we talking first love. You coming with everything fire. First love. Go to a new school. It's a school that you wanted to attend. This isn't high school. This is college. And now you are in a new setting, new surroundings. You're excited. Y'all know how it is when you, when, you, when you come into the first of something, the first love of a situation. There's an excitement. There's an allegiance. There's an attention that you give because of it being your first love. Y'all talk to each other every day get on the phone and it's endless in your conversation. Fall asleep with the phone right by you. Y'all know when your heart is in it. And you know it's interesting because in this series of scriptures this morning Jesus speaks to them and their actions. Matter of fact, the the first, uh, verse second and verse two and three speak to a recognition that he makes. A recognition of them. Speaking to the church of Ephesus. And you know what? When we start this chapter, verses two and three, I want to be in that church. Y'all must not have read that. Oh, I want to be in that church. Let me tell you why I want to be in that church. Because it starts in verse 2. It says, I know thy works. I know thy works. I know how effective you've been. I know when you join that choir, you there singing to the best of your ability. Day in and day out. I know when you are deacon and it's looking at the works that you do, I am there to do whatever is needed. I'm an usher and I'm there on my post. I'm focused on what my responsibility is. My works speak. How effective I am speaks. And obviously he's saying that's a good thing. He's saying that you are being effective. You are, you do have others watching you, others participating with you. Your works speak. But not only your works, he said, and your labor. The toiling that you put in, the effort that you put in, it is beautiful. I have to prepare myself before choir rehearsal so I get myself into, he's saying, that's all good. As a deacon, I'm, I'm, I'm reading my scriptures throughout the week, and, I, and, I, and I'm praying, and I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm being faithful in my service. He's saying, your labor, the toil that you do in the church of Ephesus, y'all good. Let me take Ephesus out and put Galilee. Y'all good. You show up. A lot of folks still waiting. Have them show back up, but y'all back. Back in the worship. 
being faithful. Some of you wasn't as faithful before the pandemic came, but now. Then volunteer to participate on activities in the church. Your labor has been beautiful. He's saying, oh, man, it's, it's beautiful. He said, and not only that, he said, not only are, are, you, are you effective in what you do, others are seeing you and want to be a part of that. And, 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 and things that were muddy are now being cleared out and working, operating in a good light. Yeah. Labor, yeah. you're there, dependable. You, you, you see the issue before it becomes one. Yeah. You're working through the, all of that. He's saying that's beautiful. He said, but then you got patience. He says, your patience, that means when they get on your last nerve, you say, but God is able. Yeah, yeah. That is when nobody shows up but you. Yeah. You say, to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Your patience, you don't go off on people because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. You have patience, yeah. love for them. You go to them and you tell them for the 15th time what you would like for them to do. Yeah. You put it on paper and then you take it off the paper and then you sit and you wait. The patience, yeah. 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 it's beautiful. That's what Jesus said. He says, not only are your works, your labor, your patience, he says, but, but also you, 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 because of your study of the word, when they come to you and preach false doctrine, you're able to call them out as liars to what the word says because you are a studier of the scripture. Amen. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I just talked about a fabulous church. Yeah. Yeah. The folks is there. Yeah. They're working through whatever obstacles come about. They're showing love to one another. Yeah. There's no backbiting. There's no clicks over here, clicks over there, talking about this one, talking about that one. When they see somebody fall, they run in and pick them up. I'm talking about a church. Yeah. They go out to the community. They serve. Well, man, Jesus, what's wrong? He brought out the recognition. How many of y'all has he recognized? <laughs> How many of y'all have given service over and beyond? Continually. Faithful. Committed. Jesus recognized that. Then he went from recognition to reprimand. I said, now wait a minute. I don't understand how all of that beautiful stuff you just said, how could you reprimand them? He says in that fourth verse, regardless of all of the stuff that you've done, you're faithful, you're there on time, you, you go over and beyond, you're reading the word, you're studying, you're praying, in spite of all of that, yes. nevertheless, I got an issue with you. You have lost your first love. Now, I don't know about y'all, but it's confusing to me how all these things that I just listed, that obviously shows my heart's in it. I'm faithful. I'm committed. I'm there. I'm doing all of the things I should be doing, and I'm even going beyond that. How is it that my heart's not in it? He's talking about love. The, the, the Bible in Hebrew speaks of love in, in four different categories. It speaks of love as uh, storgy, 
That's a love that you have with your family. He also speaks of a love of Felicia. That's a love that you have for your friends. The Bible also talks about a love, Eros. That's a, that's a love that's, that's sensual, sexual, relationship-wise. In other words, it's one that is conditional. Eros means that I, as long as you do what I want you to do, I'm in love with you. Conditional. He's not talking about those loves. Because, see, Eros is on the bottom. That's the condition. And then you have the other layers. Felicia, friend, storage, family. But the one on the top that he's talking about is agape. See, we talk about agape. But agape is that unconditional love. That agape is one that I don't need you to do anything for me because my concern is what I can do for you. Agape is a love God has for us. Agape is a love that before I'm faithful, before I'm committed, before I'm doing service, before I'm being patient, before I'm reading my word, before I'm praying, I'm first of all in love with Jesus. That's agape. Because see, everything that I do falls to that. Because see, what happens is when I've lost sight of my love for him, then my faithfulness takes over. My commitment takes over. My patience takes over. That becomes my first love. I become to say how humble I am. All the things that I have to deal with, but I'm still humble. See, that's what, see, 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 that's what, when I forget my first love, when I forget the unconditional love that I have for the Lord, that's what he's talking about. He says, all of the good that you do, it means nothing because you've given up. You've lost your first love. You in that marriage, but you just there. You come home like you're supposed to. You show love like you're supposed to. You take care of the different things that you do as you're supposed to. You share, y'all have date night. You do all of those things. But your heart ain't in it. See, that's why it's not about appearances. See, where we get caught up in it, oh, sharing is there every time. All the time. She's so committed. And you don't even know Sharon is saying in herself, I'm getting sick and tired of all of this. <laughs> Why I got to be always the first one and smiling at you, but saying inside, I'm tired of always being the one. Why do I have to always show up? Let me just get real. Yeah. See, that's when I've lost my first love. It's not about how committed that? It's not about I get there an hour before. It's not about a, it's about where is your heart? Amen. My heart ain't in it. Yeah. See, we tend to think it's about if somebody that complains all the time. Yeah, their heart ain't in it. Well, okay, you can you can say that, but I'm not talking about that. He's not talking about this. Right. See, who he's talking about is folks that appear mm-hmm. not to be negative. Yeah. So you got to throw that one out the window because he's not talking about the ones that let you know where they feel. He's talking about the ones that look, speak. God is good all the time. Are you talking about them? They've lost the love because it's not about Christ. We've lost the act of worship because we've become so geared towards 
order. So geared towards how it's supposed to be. So geared to how it's supposed to sound. And when it doesn't work in those fashions, we, we tend, to, tend to, to go left. But a lot of times that left doesn't come across. Oh, it don't. See, sometimes we think that an individual got to have this look on their face. Oh, yeah. I know they're upset. But sometimes folks smiling, shaking your hand and giving you a hug. But inside, it's being tore down. That's what we're talking about. See, the thing about it is, it's not about looking good. We always used to say, you, 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 got, a, you got a dirty pig, but you put perfume on it. It's still a dirty pig. You just made it smell different. And I didn't mean good either, because perfume and stink don't work good together. What he's talking about is, you've lost your first love. You've lost the idea of waking up in the morning and seeing me every day. You've lost the fact that before I say good morning to the one laying next to me, when I open my eyes, I'm saying good morning to the one that touched me. You've lost your first love. Where's your heart? Is your heart in it? Is the service you give it? Is your heart in it? Because Jesus is saying here that it's not. You, you're doing all the right things, but for the wrong purposes. Do you have, first of all, your desire and your love? Is it coming from Christ first? Or is it coming from how I can be promoted? How I can be talked about? How I can be pushed up, how I can be encouraged, how I can, is that what, or is it Christ first? I said earlier, before we come here to participate in the worship that I'm talking about, did you participate in it at home when you woke up this morning? Because see, the Lord didn't just meet you here. He was in every one of y'all's houses this morning and last night because that's who kept you throughout the night. So did you thank the one that you need to have the love to first before you get here talking about praise you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Jesus. No, did you do that at home? Did you do it in your car? Or did you talk about all of the shooting that's going on? All of the issues that go. Did you get here and see that things didn't start the way you thought they was going to start, do the way, did, did all of that, did, 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 you, did, did that get in the way of who you talk to? He's saying, you've lost your first love. See, when I lose my first love, I can preach about how you can get out of your trouble. But when trouble comes to my door, I don't want to say nothing. Y'all know folk like that? Long as trouble's at your door, they got all kind of scripture and prayer to say and do for you. But when trouble comes to their door, what happened to all things work together for good? What happened to the Lord is my shepherd? I shall not want. When they came and took that Cadillac out of your driveway, what happened? When they took your neighbors, you can say, oh, the Lord will make a way. But when they took yours, it was another story. First love. He says, not only does he recognize, not only does he reprimand, but the beauty of the whole thing is he also talks about restoration. That's what I love about Jesus. Because see, he knows we're going to falter. 
And what he says in the restoration, he tells them the agape love that I'm talking about, y'all used to have. He says to them, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. Remember, when you first came in contact with me, I was everything to you. You rose with me. You ate with me. You let everybody see you praying when it was lunchtime. You wouldn't eat a bite of dinner until you thanked the Lord. When it was time to go to bed, you wouldn't close your eyes until you said, thank you for this day. He said, remember where you have fallen. Look at you now. In the restoration, see, we tend to think that it's a, it's a situation that the Lord is just going to come down and just mysteriously blow on us and take us into a, a new dominion. That's not what Jesus said here. He said, you remember. Remember where you've fallen from. I've heard it even say this way. Some people say, you better do a 360 degree turn. Well, let me ask y'all. I'm here looking at y'all. And I need to change. And so the Lord, y'all tell me, is advising me to do a 360 degree turn. So let me do that for you. Where am I at? I'm in the same spot. See, he tells them to remember from whence you've fallen. And then he says, repent. Now see, repenting is not a 360 degree turn. Repenting is a 180. See, repenting is, this is, I'm going the wrong way. I'm looking at the wrong stuff. I'm focused in the wrong area. And so I need to repent. Repent means I need to turn from this. So this is a 180. So now it's time I move this way. Because see, he's saying, I need to remember. Remember what? Remember who is my first love. Remember who I look to. Remember who I praised. Remember who I gave everything to. And then turn from where I'm at right now. Yeah. Repent yeah. from where I'm at. And see, the issue is everybody think they know what everybody need to repent from but themselves. Oh, you can look at what's wrong with somebody else and see that now they need to stop that. They need to let that go. They need to move from that. They living in sin. Oh, yeah. You can easily look at the issues with others, but can you look at yourself? Because the word tells me before I can point the moat in your eye, I got to, what? In my own eye. So before I can cast judgment on what you need to do, I need to repent yeah. of what I'm not doing. That's right. yeah. He says, I need to rem you need to remember what he has done for you. Look where you at. See, that, that's the problem. We don't assess where we at. Or we give poor judgment to that assessment. We see success as in alignment with God. Because, see, if I wasn't successful, God wouldn't bless me. Well, what about the atheist that's a millionaire and has influence over millions of people? The Lord says he reigns on the just and the unjust. So if you're looking at success as your indicator that you're walking in the will of God, I suggest you do a 180. 
I suggest you repent from that viewpoint because success is not what God promised. What he promises, I will be with you. What? Matthew tells it, always. So repent from where you are looking, where you are focused, where you are. Look, yo, I, I know it, Reverend, Pastor. I'm a faithful member. I tithe. You know what? We, 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 uh, me and my chairman, we, we, we laugh about this one because uh, we came up under uh, the promotion of tithing. And I am all for tithing. Don't misconstrue uh, uh, what I'm saying. I believe tithing is what God blesses. But see, we tend to take that and make it ours. We tend to, if we don't see a financial situation like we want, we tend to say, well, the folk ain't tithing. We need to teach tithing. How many of y'all have been taught about tithing? I can't tell you how many classes <laughs> Not only that I've been taught, but taught on tithing. And you know what the realization I come to? Tithing is what God asks of us. But what we need to know is it's more than tithing that he asks of us. And Jesus is talking about not a good tither. He's talking about you've lost your first love. You've lost who you tithe into. Because if you believe you tithe in the Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor Fitzhugh Lyons Jr., you have missed the situation. Because the same God that you tithe into is the same God that got Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, the same God that's got Pastor Fitzhugh Lyons Jr., that's the same God. And when we all are in alignment with the same God, when we all are showing our first love to the same God, whoo, what will he do? That's, right. Amen. That's when. Amen. That's when the power comes into play. Yeah. That's when you think you've been influential. Yeah. Regain your first love. Yeah. Yeah. Heard a pastor say, gird yourself and serve. And watch what God multiplies. The thing I looked at with this is, see, I'm not preaching to y'all. I'm preaching to me. This word was on me. Because, see, it's easy. I talk about me. It's easy to say how faithful I am. I'm serving in and that, day in and day out. I'm giving this. I'm calling. I'm, I'm going. I'm doing what I don't want to do, but I still do. It's easy yeah. to forget the first love Amen. because of the service. See, there's the times when others will say this, yeah. and then I'm trying to counteract what they're saying instead of doing my 180 and remembering my first love. I'm trying to go over here and compromise and make happy. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to go over here and do this because it looks good. Because that's what I'm supposed to do. Because I've been in the church all my life and all I know is this is what you do when you serve. But that service gets in the way of my first love. Because, see, your pastor, on occasion, to get up and forget to say good morning to the master, too. Amen. But, see, the difference between you and me All right. is what he does. Because, uh -huh. <laughs> see, each one of us individually yeah. were made by him. Yeah. And he touches all of y'all. Yeah. See, let me, let me put it this way. When me and my brother was young, and we get in trouble, 90% of the time, it was because of me. <laughs> and he would have to get a whooping too 
because he followed me. But there was a difference in the whooping, y'all. See, my whooping seemed to be longer. I got a witness in here? All right. <laughs> and harder. Yeah. His whooping seemed to be a few straps yeah. and let go. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. And then, let me help you. There were some times where we got in trouble that it wasn't my fault. But it was still the same, Vicky. My whooping was longer yeah. and his was shorter. Yeah. But the realization I come at 56 years old is that the Lord does the same thing to us. Because each of us have a purpose defined by him. And he knows what you need to get you in line to the purpose he has. And everybody ain't to be the pastor of Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. I'm supposed to be. So the whooping that I'm going to get ain't going to be like the whooping you're going to get. But you still going to get one. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. But the blessing is yeah. restoration. Yeah. The blessing is that you can remember when you get, I don't know about y'all, but when I get out there so far, yeah. he brings the back to my remembrance. Yeah. What have I done for you? Yeah. You know the old song, What Have I Done For You Lately? Yeah. By Janet Jackson? Yeah. Yeah. What have I done for you lately? What did I do for you before? Yeah. And it makes me turn around Amen. and do my 180 and repent yeah. and stop that stinking thinking. Stop mm -hmm. all about commitment and faithfulness and know that my first, when my first love is aligned with him, yeah. you can't beat my faithfulness. Amen. You can't beat my commitment yeah. because it's aligned with him. But he not only says that, but then he also says, uh, return. He says, remember? He says, repent. Mm -hmm. Then he says, return. He says, and do the first works. Return to seeing me first before you see anyone else. Return to putting me ahead of everything else that you deal with. Return to the love you had. When y'all went out to dinner, brother, you opened the door for her, whether it was a car or the restaurant. Remember when he showed up to pick you up? You didn't have rollers in your hair, the wig off, no makeup, but you was ready. Yeah. Remember that desire that you had when you first came in contact with me. Remember, agape love is unconditional. It doesn't matter what you do to me. You can't deter me from seeing him. That's the essence of it. Because see, when he's not your first love, I'm going to step on your foot. Yeah. And you might say a couple words to me first before you, oh, uh, excuse me. But when he's your first love, yeah. somebody going to step on your foot and you're going to go, oh. But you know what? He gave me that foot. You know what? I don't need to condemn you because I serve a God that blessed me in the midst of what I was. First love. He says, return back to what you did first. Now, I know before y'all get excited about all of the things that I said he said, or you get excited about remembering what he's done for you, before you get excited about repenting, doing that 180 and turning from where you're looking, and before you get excited about the returning to what he did. He says one thing other also. In the same scripture of restoration. And we don't tend to look at that. He says, for else 
I will remove thy candlestick. But before he says that, he says, I will come unto thee quickly. So if you don't see that you've lost your first love, if you don't act according to what your first love is, he says, I will come quickly. Now the problem with that is we don't know what that means. Because time means nothing to the Lord. That quickly could mean this way or could mean 20 years. But he says, if you don't turn and repent and remember, he says you will or he will come quickly. And when he comes quickly, he says, I will remove thy candlestick out of his place. What's that, Pastor? I will remove the candlestick out of his place. Well, let's look at it. Back in the day, when we didn't have lights, switches that you could hit on the wall, you had to light candles to illuminate your area so you could see what was in that room. You had a candlestick that you would light and that would show you what's in the room. He says, if you don't recognize, if you don't see me as your first love, he says, I will come quickly and remove the candlestick. I will take away from you the insightfulness that I'm giving to you. The ability to see danger. I'm going to take it away. The ability, the insight that I give you not to go there. Be careful. I know y'all say, well, my conscience told me. No, that was the Holy Spirit speaking to you. He's saying, if you don't address this situation, I'm taking that away. In essence, what he's saying is his presence will no longer be effective to you. And the question is, why would you care? He's not your first love anyway. Why would you care? Why would you care that he would take away the insight? Because you don't look to him. You don't pray to him unless you get in trouble. So why would that be a a concern? It'd just be business as usual. But you know, the thing I've come to learn about the word of God is that if you take it for granted, which is what he's saying you're doing with his relationship with you, when you take it for granted, you've already established a pattern that's going to lead to destruction. When you don't see God first, you've already began to go down a road that will lead to destruction. See, when you don't see him, you don't heed to what he speaks to you at all. Because you become so so faithful in what you're doing, so committed to the service you're doing that you will go and look up everything to do for that job, but you won't get down on your knees and say thank you to the master. So what he's saying is your opportunity to have that illumination from the spirit, your opportunity to see him And all of you doing will be eradicated because you have refused to acknowledge he's not your first love. You will end in destruction because you will not see him as your first love. He said, I will remove it 
except you repent. We have to come to an understanding. It's not about being on time, being there when nobody else is there, knowing everything before it starts. Where is your heart? Is your heart in it? Because, see, when your heart is in it, you don't stay in it so you can get recognition. You stay in it because you know he has blessed you beyond measure. I say that because there are some that are in a marriage right now that you want to say, forget it. But I want to tell you, not them, but you. I want to tell you to remember when you first met that joker. Remember (laughs) when you first met that beautiful woman. Remember. Repent from what you think everything is wrong in the situation and say, Lord, fix me. And return. What he's saying here is to remember without him as your first love, without him as the agape in your life, without him and your unconditional love to him, you have nothing. All of that is like a tingling symbol. It makes noise, but it means nothing. Love for him. Because see, when you love him, you won't love me. Because see, you can't love him and not love me. I didn't say you can't put me in my place. I didn't say I couldn't put you in your place. But what I say, I'm going to do it in love. And some of y'all say, well, I've been doing that. Well, you know that better than I do. He's talking to your first love. Is your heart in it? Is your heart in it? On that job, is your heart in it? Are you half in and half out? Looking for a blessing. Me and my wife was talking this week. uh, The Lord says, When you half in and half out, that's called lukewarm. And what does the Lord say about lukewarm? He spewed you out. So if you half in that marriage and half out, if you half in that job and half out, if you half in your worship and half out, he's spewing you out. What is your first love? What do you see? unconditionally that's keeping you. Because when that's the case, I don't have to tell you to worship him. I ain't got to tell you to put him first. You don't have to have money. You don't have to have prestige. You don't have to have position. Because when you got him as your first love, I used to see the old saints that used to come in to Galilee Missionary Baptist Church and I knew they got a ride from somebody because their husband wouldn't bring them. And they came in here not fussing but thanking God for who brought them. But first of all, for the one that touched them to bring them. And thanked them for the service and thanked them for, they just thanked them throughout. That's what I remember growing up and seeing. I also saw the other two. But I'm grateful that the God that I serve illuminates the ones that walked with the unconditional love, the ones that showed that my first love was not dedicated to the fact that I'm here, but dedicated to the fact of he has made me. First love. Is your heart in it? Is your heart truly in it? Because what that means is, do you see him before you see anything else? 
before you see the troubles, before you see the issues, before you see your tiredness, before you see your commitment, do you see him first? Amen. And the question is, well, Pastor, why would we see Jesus yeah. first? Why would we want to see him first? I'm glad you asked. Because see, some 2,000 years ago, yeah. the one that I'm telling you, you ought to see first, saw you first and said to the Father, I will, because of me seeing them first, go down and take on the body. I will sacrifice myself for the ones that I see because of the unconditional love that I have. And the beauty of it is, is he had that for his father. And him and God were the same, but yet he still saw his father first. So if you tell me that all I see is, Jesus, is the Lord and don't see Jesus, I'm telling you, you're wrong. Because if you see the father, you have to see the son. Because that son was rubbed from court to court. And that son was hung on the cross. That son was taken down and put in a borrowed tomb. And on the third day, that son got up. And it wasn't an S-U-N, it was an S-O-N. The son, when he got up, that enabled us to be able to see the Father. None can get to the Father except you see Jesus. That's why. That's why. Our first love has to be Jesus. Before we can worship, before we can serve, before we can do anything. What is your first love? And the battle is keeping that. Remembering longevity doesn't mean that you erase it. It means that it gets stronger. Because as you grow, you go from milk to meat. And you recognize that I can't do it without him. He's telling them, I see all that you do, and I applaud you. But y'all have forsook your first love because you don't look to him. You don't remember. You haven't repented. And you haven't returned to his fellowship. The question is, what is your relationship with Christ? Where do you see him in your life? That's a personal question that we all have to ask. Because see, when I see him first, I don't need you to come ask me to do something because I'm moving towards that myself. When I see him first, I don't have to ask you how you doing today. You tell me how you doing today. When I see him first, before I got something negative to say, I'm talking about Ain't he good? Yes. Won't he do it? Yes. I'm going to keep striving. And you know what? It ain't what it looks like. Amen. See, that's what. When my heart is in it, I can see those things as to what God has made them to be. And I can remember, as Job said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Even if the things don't work out the way I want them to work out, I will trust him. When they talk about me and do whatever they do, I'm going to trust him. When he says I need to let that go, I'm going to trust him. Him. See, that, that, that becomes a problem, too, when he says, when that repent comes and he tells you you need to let some stuff go. Yeah. See, we become accustomed 
to compromise and some stuff we enjoy and some stuff we tolerate and that's from some of the stuff he's telling us to let go. See, sometimes we put folks in positions and we keep them in there forever. And the Lord is saying, you forgetting your first love. You looking at that position and you looking at this and you looking at that. You're not looking at me. And when you start looking at me, you talk about, are they going to get you where you need to go or am I the one that's going to get you where you need to go? All right. What we need to do is we need to reassess. We need to do that 180. We need to align ourselves with him. Is our heart in it? That's the question. And that's the question that I ask you this day as we open the doors of the church. Is your heart in it? Are you looking at him? Are you seeing him in all your actions? Are you saying, Lord, just as I am, I'm giving myself to you. Are you saying, Lord, I, I, I don't have what I ought to have, but I'm giving it all to you just as I am. I'm giving it all to you. That's the question. Is your heart in it? For you out there that are watching us, question is, is your heart in it? Because if it is, you need to see Christ and see him. And other these words, Lord, I see your son. I accept him into my life. And I want to commit to following him. Just as I am, I commit myself to you. And when you've done that, He's come into your life. And he's given you everything you need. And what you have to do is seek him in how it's to be used. If you are, this is your chance. This is your opportunity to come. Play just as I am, son. This is your chance to come and accept him into your life. This is your opportunity. If you at home, stand right where you are and allow him to take you and make you as he wants you to be. Thank him for what he is doing in your life. This is your chance. If you're on our Facebook, go to our message page, put your name and number, we'll contact you. And we pray that you have an opportunity to come in-house, that we can serve together in the work that God has for us. We want to extend the altar call for this time, and right where you are, bow with me. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the support that you continue to demonstrate in all of our lives. We thank you, Father, for being our example of unconditional love. We thank you, Father, for your son who demonstrated unconditional love by giving of his life for us. Father, we pray for the souls that have received you this day. We thank you for the souls that are under the sound of my voice. We thank you for blessing each and every one of us. Guide us, Father. Lead us according to thy will. Father, we commit to you to remember, to repent, and to return to you as our first love. Thank you, Father, for all that you continue to do for each and every one of us. We thank you with all that we have. Thank you for blessing those in the hospital, 
Blessed are those in the nursing home. Blessed are those that have gone through many of things this week, Father. Thank you for touching them in a special way. From the deacon to the member in the pew, thank you, Father, for blessing all of us. Our young people, continue to bless them and watch over them. Thank you for all that you have done. In your son Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to prepare ourselves for our giving. This is our offering time. And as you know, we don't walk. But we are asking. We do have... Areas designated in the back of the sanctuary for you to give your gifts. We ask that you that are in-house, if you choose to have a physical gift, put it there. If you choose to use Givelify, it's still available for those online as well as those in the house. And then also Cash App. And for those that have mailed in, and those that have called and asked, thank you as well. We want to be grateful for all of the things God has opened up and made available for us in our continuous giving to him. So would you pray with me as we pray over our gifts for this morning. God, we thank you for the gift and the giver. Father, we ask that you continue to Show mightily as you have, through pandemic or not, that our faithfulness is not in what we put in, but what you have put in us. Thank you, Father. We ask that everything that has been given be used for the betterment of thy kingdom. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. I want to <clears throat> make mention before... We dismiss. I want to make mention that this week I want to double up again. And I want to double up because them streets out there is not our friend. Whether you old or young. And I'm just foolish enough to believe that there's been a few saints that have been praying. And there has been some acts of God that has happened because of your prayer. If you don't think that he hears you, you don't know him. I'm grateful for every opportunity. I had an opportunity uh, last week to speak to Sister Wyman and she said, Pastor, I didn't pray at noon, but I did at one. Thank you, Amen. Lord. Because you know what? I don't pray, I haven't prayed at noon, but I'm praying at 11, 1, 2, 3, whatever it is. I've learned this week has taught me I better be praying more than just at noontime. And I'm not just praying for others. I'm praying for what he has done over my family, over my life, because I'm come to understand that prayer changes things. So I'm, I'm inviting you to join in prayer this week. I'm asking at noon. But any time this week, I'm asking, inviting you to join in with prayer for our young people and our seniors continually. And this whole world. And thank you. And thank him for what he's opening up in spite of what the world wants to do. I know they talk about all the shooting, but I'm going to tell you this much. That shooting don't mean nothing, and it don't come in no comparison to the God I serve. 
the God I serve, when he gets ready, he'll cease it all. So I'm not going to look to the chief of police and I'm not going to look to the man. I'm going to look to Jesus for my answer. Thank you so much for your commitment thus far. And pray for us as a family that we continue to grow in what God is pushing us into. We thought the pandemic was, I thought the pandemic was something else, but you know what? What he got in store, the pandemic was little compared to where he's pushing us to. And the problem is he didn't say how many were supposed to be there. See, we get caught up on number. What Gideon say? Lord, I got too many. That's what Gideon said. He said, no. You, 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 you. He, no, Gideon said, I don't have enough. He said, no, you got too many. Because, see, the answer is not in what you can see, but it's in what he can make happen. So let's keep our hands in God's hand. Let's keep praying. Let's keep seeking him. As we go into another week, giving him the praise and thanking him. God bless you. I thank you so much for being with us this morning. And let's stand and we can just continue our worship with him and all that he is doing and has done. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let every heart say, Amen. God bless you.